So today is the release day for the brand new M2 Pro, M2 Max MacBook Pros, and then the all new M2 and M2 Pro Mac Mini. And in this video, we're gonna unbox, this is the M2 Pro uh, Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. So I believe it is the base level configuration on Apple's website for the one with the M2 Pro chip. I'm gonna unbox it, show you what's new, and I'll try to run a few benchmarks and just give you an idea of where we're at in terms of performance. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and just jump right into the box. Here you can see we have that configuration, 16 gigs of unified memory, 512 gigs of SSD storage, and of course it comes with the brand new M2 Pro chip. And so in typical Apple fashion, we have two little pull tabs that we can just throw off on the ground that I won't clean up for a couple of weeks. And this is a pretty similar unboxing, honestly, to any other Mac Mini that you might have recently got. Uh, if you have the M1 Mac Mini and you found that it was not enough power, then this might be something to intrigue you. But if you're going from M1 to M2, I would probably not do that. Anyways, lifting up on the top here, we have the Mac Mini itself, all nice and shiny. There's a little pull tab. And then really, it's a simple unboxing. We've got our booklets, which are getting smaller and smaller by the release. And we do have a matching space grayish silver, I think this is silver, silver looking um, Apple sticker. And so that's pretty neat. And then of course you have the power cable for the Mac Mini. There is one thing I forgot to do here at the bottom. You have to pull this tab and you'll see it says Mac Mini. It's a little upside down, but just like the last model, which is actually right here, I can show you. Here is the uh, M1 Mac Mini, and then this is the M2 Pro Mac Mini. And honestly, you're not gonna notice a whole lot of uh, differences when it comes to the design. I mean, it's still pretty much the exact same in terms of footprint. It is quite literally the exact same, I believe. Yep, all the way around. I need to pull off that uh, tab that hides the ports, but it's pretty much the same. You still have your little LED light here for when you turn it on. And on the back here is where you'll notice the biggest cosmetic difference. And honestly, it could be a huge game changer for those who uh, are trying to figure out which model to get. And that is with here, this is the M2 Pro. You get two USB type A's and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Those are the same. You got your HDMI ports. Uh, you have four Thunderbolt 4 ports, which is something that people are probably going to want. And so that could be, you know, depending on what you're planning on doing with this machine, this could be the reason why you get the M2 Pro over something like a middle of the road M2 Mac Mini. And so obviously on the M1, there was only two Thunderbolt ports, and then you have your ethernet port and your power, and of course the power button. So with that said, let's go ahead and get this thing booted up. I'm gonna do a quick cut and we'll have this thing plugged in and hopefully rocking a few benchmarks so you can see just um, what it's capable of in terms of performance. So for the benchmarks portion, I wanted to compare this machine to something a bit more powerful to the M1 Mac Mini from 2020. So I went with the 2021 M1 Max MacBook Pro to see how close this new M2 Pro Mac Mini would be in comparison. And the results were honestly pretty shocking to me. Now, for just the sake of clarity here, I don't think that benchmark should be the end all be all, but I think it's a good way to establish a baseline um, in whether or not you think this machine's going to be able to do what you need it to do. And then of course, it's just gonna come down to testing it yourself. Um, you know, you can try it out and see if it works for you. And if it doesn't, you can always, you know, try something else. Now, with all of that said, for reference, the M1 Max MacBook Pro that I got back in 2021 uh, was configured with 32 gigabytes of RAM, a 10 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, along with a terabyte of SSD storage. And back at the time, this MacBook Pro retailed for $34.99. Now, this new M2 Pro Mac Mini has 16 gigs of RAM, a 10-core CPU, a 16-core GPU, 512 gigs of SSD storage, and of course, is powered by that new M2 Pro Apple Silicon, and it retails for 
So why were the results shocking to me? Well, I mean, we have to keep in mind that the two configurations that I just listed, the brand new M2 Pro is actually half the price and should technically be better than the M1 Pro, but I still expected the M1 Max and this specific MacBook configuration to kind of blow the M2 Pro Mac Mini out of the water in some tests. And that actually was what happened. But in most of the others, it was either very close or the M2 Pro was actually ahead. Now, again, benchmarks are not meaningless, but they shouldn't be the end all be all. I know I stated that earlier. It's just gonna come down to what you end up doing with your machine. But honestly, looking at these specs and looking at the results and just my very brief time, I mean, I can't give you a full review or how it works in my actual day-to-day -day life because I literally just got this machine a few hours ago, but I'm fairly confident just looking at these results and knowing how these machines work that I can run the entire YouTube channel, the podcast, all of the digital content that I create can be done on this M2 Pro Mac Mini. So here are some quick benchmark scores uh, to kind of help back th those claims up and how I feel about it. With the speedometer for web app responsiveness test, the M2 Pro Mac Mini came out a little bit on top. And the same goes with the single core Cinebench scores, although it was a little bit behind in multi-core. And when we go down to Geekbench, the same thing applies here. Single core scores favor the M2 Pro Mac Mini, but by a pretty slim margin. But where the M1 Mac still shines is in the GPU, with early benchmark scores revealing a pretty wide margin in favor of the M1 Max. And also the SSD speeds were kind of a lot in favor of the M1 Max. I actually don't remember what the scores were back when I originally tested it, but this one terabyte drive on the MacBook Pro is super fast. I was getting read and write speeds of over four to 5,000 megabytes per second compared to the upper twos to threes with the new M2 Pro Mac Mini SSD. But obviously it is going to come down to real world use. And I can just kind of make these assumptions just based off of the M1, the M1 Pro, the M1 Max, the M1 Ultra. I've used all of these machines that have those chips and I can just kind of get an idea just doing these tests and just kind of knowing um, what this machine might be like in terms of performance. And again, I am fairly confident that I can do all of the work that I need to do in terms of graphics and video editing and production, um, I think I can pretty fairly say that I can do it on the M2 Pro Mac Mini, um, especially since I can definitely do it on the M1 Max MacBook Pro. And for the most part, these scores were pretty, pretty close. Now it'll be interesting to see that GPU difference, just how drastic it might actually be. And uh, you know, I'll test it out when that time comes. But of course, please be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next couple of videos that we're gonna be doing based on these new M2 Pro and M2 Max machines. And uh, yeah, the HomePods, there's a lot going on. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those videos. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you around in the next video.